What's up, everybody, and welcome to the Atheist Roundtable. We're excited for another great show tonight. And uh, as always, I'm Austin, uh, the host, and my co-host, Mike, is as always joining me tonight. Good to see you again, my man. Yeah, buddy. How you doing? Good, good. Uh, I love the studio, man. Uh, it's real. And, uh, I know it is, 100%. No green screen at all. Yeah. Um, so we're, we're you know, pumped. You know, how I, know it's, you know how I know it's real? How do you know? Faith. <laughs> Damn faith. Uh, so a couple announcements we want to go through, and then we'll get into our guest here. Uh, here in a minute, we're very, very excited uh, about who we have on tonight and the conversation we're going to have. Uh, but just a couple things. Uh, number one, I want to let everybody know that we now will be streaming uh, not just on YouTube, uh, but also on Facebook Live uh, when we have our live feed. So uh, if you're on Facebook and you uh, you prefer that platform uh, starting tonight, we're there and it's uh, at Ath uh, the Atheist Roundtable and you can find us there if, if you prefer that platform. And uh, go check us out and, and like us, follow us there too. And uh, we we went live Saturday night and had a Q&A with uh, Pasta, Mike, and myself. And we were at 200... Uh, subscribers and as of tonight when we logged in we we're at 235 so just in a couple of days another 35 uh, subscribers and people that wanted to tune in and watch so again thank you guys that's amazing and uh, as i say on every single episode you guys are the rock stars and you're making this happen and pushing this thing forward so uh, we, we appreciate the momentum and the energy that you guys are putting behind it uh the next thing uh t-shirts are in like i said saturday and they are officially on the website. PayPal, uh, PayPal is set up so you can start ordering and uh, uh, get your shirts. And uh, um, again, just help support us. The, the, uh, any of the, the money we get from that or our Patreon goes to upgrading equipment uh, and making us sound better, look better, uh, and, and just get, you know, making our voice uh, more broad you know, and our message more broad. Uh, so we're, uh, we're excited about that. And then again, uh, for those that aren't familiar with Godless Engineer, uh, he is uh, one of the atheist content producers here on YouTube and on TikTok, and uh, the the man is a, a genius in in his own right. And he just launched an app, and um, you 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 have to go get it. Um, and I can never uh, I can never say it right, so I want to make sure that I um, say it correctly. So uh, it is uh, Crestus is uh, is the name of it. So go uh, go search it, look it up. Uh, you know, if you're wanting to get an epistemology, and especially you're know, breaking down the story of Jesus Christ uh, and, and what that, you know, what that looks like in the Bible and, and, and the reality of, you know, was, uh, you know, was it an actual human being? Uh, was he divine? All the, you know, uh, breaks all that down. So it's a great app. And I've, I've learned a lot from that. So I, I'd encourage you to go get that. Uh, and uh, I've enjoyed it so far. I've been on there, uh, spent quite a bit of time now on there and, uh, and I love it. So uh, last thing, some upcoming events. Uh, we have a lot on our schedule and uh, the guys have just updated our calendar today and we got a lot of things ahead of us. And uh, that's, that's exciting. Cause every, every time we turn around, we get a flood of people that, you know, want to come on have conversations and we appreciate that. And uh, everybody that's been a part so far, will tell you that, uh, you know, we, you know, we love just to have uh, a, 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 just a chill, cool dialogue uh, with, with, with our guests. And we, we ask tough questions. Don't get me wrong. They're, you know, they're not always the easiest questions, but it's never, you know, we never ber berate anybody or, uh, belittle anybody, you know, so it's cool the response that we've got from theists and atheists, uh, you know, in, in that regard. But uh, coming up uh, on Friday, the 22nd, uh, we have a gentleman named Jeff. Uh, he's a theist. Then on the 24th, remember, our times are, you know, always going to be nine o'clock unless we announce uh, different. But uh, Albert, a uh, gentleman named Albert, be on the 24th. He is uh, Seventh Day Adventist. And then uh, Friday, we're actually going to have two uh, events. Uh, kind of popping off. So uh, at 6.30, we're going to have a debate between John and Mike, uh, some of our friends from uh, TikTok and the Discord. And that uh, debate is going to be on the, um, again, another one on, uh, you know, did Jesus, you know, did Jesus exist? What Was he a real man or was he mythical? Uh, and if he did exist, was he divine? Was was, was he God? Um, so that'll be at 6.30. Then at 9 o'clock, uh, we'll have Janine on. Um, and she... Uh, she believes there's a higher power, um, but uh, doesn't you know doesn't necessarily buy into a certain religion or anything. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that one because I'll be a little different than 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 what we've done um, up to this point and 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 tonight as well. 
And then uh, the last two, uh, Sunday, uh, the last Sunday of this month, the 31st, uh, at Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. <laughs> I feel like a car salesman. Uh, Sunday night, uh, 9 p.m. again. Uh, Neil, the 604 atheist. Uh, like I said, Saturday, he's had uh, just about every, not all, but almost every ACA uh, host on his show. Uh, Seth Andrews has been on his show. Um, I've seen some other, you know, uh, popular names on there, and uh, we're going to have him on uh, on on the thirty first. And I'm I'm really pumped about that. And he he's he's a really cool guy. And then on uh, June eighth, uh, I will be on his show and uh, talking about deconversion and and uh, um, you know leaving leaving religion, uh, le- leaving Christianity. So uh, those are things we have coming up, and 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 there's a couple more we have. Uh, that I'm waiting for confirmations on. So a lot of exciting stuff. And I will say that if you want to be a part of the round table, you want to sit and have a conversation with us, uh, we would love to have you. And we do just simply love having a conversation uh, with people getting to know them, you know, what they believe and why they believe it. So enough of all of that. Let's get down to business. It's time to rock and roll. So I'm going to give a little different introduction than I normally do because uh, uh, I already told Mark that this this, this is a little little different uh claim that 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 we've had um so this this is uh mark we've met mark on on tiktok and uh, he's on a couple different platforms if he wants to plug those here in a little bit he's more than welcome uh to do that but mark claims to be and and um you know and i'll let him give the, the the full uh synopsis on this but uh mark claims to be the uh the return of the christ the messiah and um the re uh, seventh uh, reincarnation of uh, Buddha, if I, if, and if I get that, I wrote it down, but I want to make sure I got that right. Um, eighth, I'm sorry, the eighth reincarnation uh, of Buddha. So as everybody knows that if you watch this show and you follow us, uh, we, you know, when people make extraordinary claims, they make big claims, we are going to zero in. Um, so we've already told Mark that it'll be a great conversation, a, 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 a chill conversation, but chill doesn't mean we won't ask difficult conversations or uh, difficult yeah. questions. Sorry. Uh, so uh, Mark, before we dig into all that, what we always ask people, uh, the first thing is in our format is the what, uh, what is your story? Uh, tell us a little bit about who Mark is, uh, you know, and how, how you've uh, become the man you are today. All right. So as far as like this part of my journey, uh, it starts when I'm about uh, 12, actually, I was laying in bed and uh, let's get to that question of first cause. And I was like, all right, so God existed, he created everything. So what, I was raised Christian. And so my whole methodology was based on that. But I was sitting there at night thinking about God and like, all right, well, if, you know, if God created everything, what created God, right? Because we live in that casual uh, universe. I hit a wall and it was like, kind of broke me a little bit. I freaked out. Uh, I was kind of messed up for like, like a month just thinking about this over and over and over again. But it really, it, it started me on that path of asking questions about everything. Like, why did God send a, a guy down just to be killed and tell us that we weren't good enough and we never would be good enough. So we had to kill this guy, a blood sacrifice, in order for everyone to ever, like to have salvation. A lot of it didn't add up. Uh, there was a lot of like inconsistencies that I saw in the Bible that uh, didn't make sense and didn't seem like a loving God that was promised by Christianity. And so I questioned more and I questioned more. When I was about 17, I completely broke away from Christianity and I decided to go on my own voyage. So I started studying Buddhism and Hinduism and, and, and Taoism, anything I could get my hands on, basically. I was kind of an atheist for a little bit. And uh, yeah, when I was about 17, 18, I started to get this weird feeling that this whole thing we're doing here, this reality, had a purpose. And there was a mystery to be solved and a thing to be had. I don't know why I had that feeling. It just kind of built up in my heart. And so from studying religion, it became, I needed to understand what religion was fundamentally and what spirituality was and what I was doing here. You know, those big questions that basically guide science and religion. How the heck did we get here? Why are we alive and what happens when we die? So I pushed and pushed until I discovered alchemy. And now this is where I get a lot of flack, especially from from Christians, from from the Abrahamic religions in general, was you know they, they, a lot of people look at alchemy as sort of this dark art. In fact, it's not at all. The, the study of alchemy is to understand one's own place in the universe and their relationship to Creator. And so a very strange thing happened, which we'll talk more about when we get into the deeper how and why of what happened. 
but essentially I asked a question. And that question began a series of very strange events in my life that ultimately led me to this conclusion. Okay, so um, so that that last that uh, the, the last phrase there was interesting to me. Uh, sequence of strange events. Um, <clears throat> so pl please, yeah, uh, expound on that. Yeah, so I started getting, I guess, what we call prophetic dreams. So uh, one of the first, I had dealt with a lot of hauntings, and now of course that's another very like ubiquitous, uh, kind of strange, unexplained area of of reality that's not really backed up by science, but I was getting the shaking doors, you know, like nightmares at night where I wake up and just like things were moving and shaking. And but it happened a lot as I was younger. And, and so one night, this is where the prophetic stuff started happening. I prayed to Jesus because at the time I was still a devout Christian and I got back a message. And it's anytime someone says this, God speaks to you. It's very hard to explain. And, and believe me, I'm a pretty skeptical guy. And half of my belief lies with science, but I heard a voice and the voice said, it's fine that you pray to me, brother, but you're going to have to do this on your own eventually. And so that was very interesting to me. And not too much longer after that, I was speaking with a friend and uh, he was just down on his luck. He'd had a bad upbringing, didn't have a, a mother figure, kind of resented women uh, as a result of not being able to have a mother figure. I think a lot of stuff there, a lot of baggage. We were just down about the world, complaining about how terrible the world was and all that. And I just had this urge to tell him, he's like, well, brother, you know, it's you. It's you who needs to fix this. It's like the darkness in you is spills out into the world. The darkness in each one of us spills out into the world. And our collective uh, anger and hatred creates this, this mess that we get ourselves into. And then I said to him, he says, you don't, because he was religious too. I said, don't wait for Jesus. You are the second coming. And I swear to you, I've never had any weird experience where I heard like voices or anything. But that time, well, only time ever, I heard, I will cut out your tongue. It threw me for a loop. And so I realized in that moment, whatever I was saying was important because anything that would say something like that couldn't be good. And so I said to him, I said, James, that's the most important thing I've ever said to you. Don't ever forget it. And at that moment, it was as if something hit me here in my chest. I started to like feel like shaky, anxious, and my hands went ice cold, and I couldn't get them warm for hours. I was in front of, in front of a wood stove. It wouldn't go away. So I know this is very hard to wrap your head around. It was hard for me to wrap my head around. But then I started to have a series of other dreams on top of that. So I'm dealing with this weird stuff. I'm, I'm starting to feel like there's some actual spirits, like this thing is real. And I've, I've not been someone to dive into that kind of thing, but there's starting to be a lot of weird things happening. So then I had the dreams, which are very interesting. Uh, the first one, I was in the jungle, okay, and I'm walking through the Amazon, I assumed, and they were, we were walking by a stream, and this guy was speaking, and he said, you know, every thousand years, somebody comes to save the world, and there was this man with a giant bowl, it was a dark liquid, in it, and he was spinning it, and I looked at the liquid, and it was like a mirror, like a black mirror, and the, my partner at the time, my girlfriend at the time, in the dream, turned and looked at me and said, it's you dreams over. So of course, the first thing I say is I'm, an, I'm, I'm, I'm a human being. I'm a man who loves adventure and a part of me just because I am a man loves the idea of glory. And so of course, this dream is just me dreaming of saving the world, being a world savior, a king of kings. I think every man wants that a little bit, maybe women too, but I'm not a woman, so I can't speak for them. But I think every man desires that a little bit to be like a savior for the world. It's the perfect alpha. It's the major alpha. And so I threw that idea away. I'm like, it's nonsense. It's my ego, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, a month later, I had another dream. And this one was kind of scary. I'm, I'm going into a basement rave party. And I go to the doorman and I'm like, hey, I'm looking for Jesus. Is he here? And he looks at me wild eyed and said, you're the son of the Prince of Darkness. And he slides a key to me and he whispers the word ayahuasca. And now I don't know much about ayahuasca. I knew there was something interesting going on in, in South America in the rainforest where people were doing some sort of ritual. And so uh, I got up and I checked this out. I checked this out and uh, I started to learn about ayahuasca and I'm thinking, okay, this is the next step. This is something I have to do. So I spent about, um, about three years preparing 
did a lot of research, making sure I would go to a place that was safe and secure, just understood how to travel in South America. I did a lot of meditation to, pre to prepare because I'd never done psychedelics. And I guess you could consider ayahuasca a psychedelic. And so I went down there and I took the brew and it was the most important thing I'd ever done in my life. So there was two sessions of ayahuasca and one session of San Pedro. And in the two sessions of ayahuasca, I was basically told everything that I was doing wrong in my life, everything I needed to do to get it right. And I had a vision. It was a, it was, I guess you'd say a fourth or a fifth dimensional snapshot of the thousand years that could have been, but never were. So what I mean by that is I went into a sphere and it showed me if the Greco-Roman Empire had never fallen and they had got past that last stage of the civilization where everything went to, to garbage and they broke past that into a new level of empire and created a global empire of peace. And uh, then I was brought to this mountain and on the mountain was carved a, a statue of Jesus. I don't know, 500 feet tall. And there was music playing from it. And it told me, it says, in the future, uh, music will be played to heal all wounds of the body and mind. And all, so all these things are transpiring. And they're basically telling me, it's like, you are the one that's going to make this happen. You are going to set the stone, like set the stones up. And there's a time coming very soon, a great crisis. And it can go one of two ways. The world can fall apart and descend into chaos much like Sodom and Gomorrah, or you can take the other road and bring on a thousand years of peace and prosperity. And they said, I'd play a major role in that experience. So the last day we took San Pedro and that's equivalent to peyote. So the active ingredient is mescaline. And I'm not promoting the use of any drug here, but it is one of the most incredible experiences I've ever had. And, uh, so we're taking it, we take it, and everything we did, the medicine we took was accompanied by a ritual. And so we sat down, we drank the San Pedro, it was gross. It was like the consistency of throw up coming out of your mouth, but it was going back in and ayahuasca was bad enough. This was just terrible. It was like saliva and throw up, it was dreadful. It was, at least it tasted like plants. Uh, so we took this and we're sitting there for about 30 minutes and there's this, this shaman that came out of the Andes mountains um, so deep that his language had to be translated into Spanish and then English because there was no, no direct translation between uh, his language and English. So we had two translators and so he's talking to someone else talks and someone else talks and we understand. So he's building the world with these, this fabric and these beads and these cocoa leaves and all these things and he's saying these prayers and he's saying our names and he wraps this square up and he walks up to each one of us, does a prayer and hits our chest with it. He gets to me and he does it. And it's like some kind of wind blows through me. I instantly break down into tears, sob like crazy, and uh, just let go of a bunch of things I didn't realize I was holding on to. And then I got up and you have memories of being a kid. We all do, right? Well, for the most part, you can remember being a kid. You can remember playing with Legos or going swimming or your first ride on a bike but you don't remember exactly how it feels. You don't remember being an actual kid and believing that a tree was a giant piece of broccoli, right? You don't remember the magic of being a kid, the innocence, the lack of jadedness to going through life. When you're on San Pedro, you do. You are a kid. And so I'm taking the San Pedro and the shaman told us, make sure you find time to be by yourself. The reason San Pedro is called San Pedro is because it's St. Peter, Spanish, the, the Hispanic uh, version of that. Uh, and St. Peter held the keys to the gates of heaven. And they believed that St. Pedro, the medicine, held the keys to the, uh, to the gates of heaven. And so basically they told us, you can find those keys as long as you find some quiet space to yourself and meditate. And so we had three people there that were really there to learn, like seek wisdom. And then we had three like, you know, weekend warriors, kind of like, doing this recreational for fun. So we're by the river. I'm just high as a kite feeding these uh, cows. And I'm like, this is the most important thing I could be doing with my life right now. It was just this amazing experience. But then I re the three people started taking their phones out and playing around. And then it reminded me that I needed my quiet time. So I went down the river about a quarter mile and I sat under a waterfall and 
I started to think about this idea, like what is this keys to, to the gates of heaven mean? And I had this vision that there was a thing that happened in human history, a very dark, sad thing that fractured us, that gave us basically a special trauma. And that that's what the reason we were having so many issues in the world. And then I thought deeper into it. I said, well, what would be the antithesis to that? What would be the, the remedy to that? Well, a great act of good. Uh, an incredible act of good, an incredible act of healing and love that would remedy this special trauma. And then I realized that the keys to the gates of heaven, or so I perceived it to be from my experience, was to have the heart and the mind of a child, to see life every day as a new opportunity, to give love, to give gratitude, to be completely honest, no matter if it offends people, we know these qualities of the child that we sort of nail out of them because it's rude or whatever, but a lot of these qualities are virtuous and we sort of beat it out of, of kids, unfortunately. But there's so many great qualities that we forget as children that if applied now with our adult wisdom and our strength uh, would, would have great effect positively for the world. Hey, so when hey, I Mark, came back... Mark, yeah. Mark can, I, can I jump in there? Um, so... Um, so th thank you for uh, for sharing that, and, and there's a lot to come back in, uh, to and, and unpack there, you know. So, uh, but for uh, for time purposes, like like I said, you know, we want to we want to make sure respecting um, the the time frames on the on the questions. So, uh, <clears throat> there's a lot that's going to tie into the why that that you just shared. So, uh, Mike, Mike and I are going to necessarily a ask any questions uh, right now. Uh, but what what I really want to hear, um, and if you take just a couple minutes. Um, you know, that you, you shared, you know, your, you know, your, your, what, or uh, yeah, your, what, what's your story? You know, you shared that and, and kind of bled into um, a little bit of the other questions, but that, that typically happens. Uh, but how, how, how did you decide that, oh, okay, th th this is it, like, th th this is what I'm supposed to do. This is what I'm supposed to believe in, you know, in two, two or three minutes uh, or so, what's, how, how, how did, how did you get there? How did you get to that destination? Yeah, so with the first message that when I prayed to Jesus and I heard this message back, uh, when I've got those prophetic dreams, and to be completely honest, it's been a lingering feeling in me since I was young. I try to push it off. I try to deny it. Like I said, that's all ego. That's all ego. But I've always felt a deep passion. If you could ask me what I wanted to do with my life. If I had a billion dollars, didn't have to worry about money, I'd want to do whatever I could to improve the state of the world and its people. It's, it's the deepest desire I have in my life. And so along with all these kind of strange occurrences that I saw as, as synchronicities and providence over randomness and coincidence, um, it was me realizing that I was Christ because I wanted to be, sincerely, not for some disingenuous purpose, but because I actually wanted to be it. And just like someone wants to be an engineer and they can become one by going to school, and building or designing houses, I became Christ because I wanted to, and I studied and learned how to do it. Okay, great. Uh, <clears throat> and you know, the the uh, when a lot of what you already shared, you know, kind of fit in that. But I wanted to make sure that there wasn't any, uh, you know, major bullet points that that you wanted to uh, to put on there. But really, the 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 last uh, chunk of, of you know, of our time here together, I want to jump into the why. And just for the listeners' uh, sake, just so you know, the ones that, that listen to us, you know, every time we're on, you know, we try to kind of spend an even amount uh, of time on, on, uh, on, you know, the what, how and why. But tonight, we really wanted to focus on the why. So that's why we're trying to, you know, get, uh, you know, get ahead to that. And, you know, I've been, I've been taking some notes and, and I get right. And I know uh, Mike, Mike has as well, but uh, before we really dive into it, uh, Mark, again, you know, the, this is the most important part. So don't, you know, uh, don't take up a bunch of time, but, you know, take, take five minutes or so. And, you know, the, 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 what and the how, but why Mark, why, why do you believe that you are uh, the second coming of a Messiah, uh, the eighth reincarnation of a Buddha, uh, you know, and, and whatever, and, and again, I, and I'm not being funny at all right now. I'm trying to be disrespectful. I don't know. All, all, no, I think good, yeah, absolutely that, good, man. It's all good. Um, that's that's involved, but you know, why do you, Mark, believe what you believe? Because I think it's actually just a practical method, and so I'm just the first one I think to admit it 
uh, appreciate it, embrace it, uh, have no fear in telling the world if I feel that way, and wanting to teach how to do it, essentially. I think becoming a Christ is a practical thing. A lot of people think Christ is Jesus' last name. It's not. It means anointed. Anointed means to turn your head to God and see God. This is for everyone. Um, and to get into a little bit of, I guess, the scientific or empirical uh, quantum mechanics, starting to see that uh, the universe is uh, potentially holographic, uh, two-dimensional in nature, and that our minds have a subtle effect on matter and energy. I've just proliferated that a bit further and believe that we can have active control over matter and energy if we can truly believe it within ourselves. We've heard the placebo effect. Imagine this is the placebo effect on steroids. I think it's a birthright for every single one of us. I'm the second coming or the eighth incarnation because I finally, I, I, I've decided to actually come out and say it. And I don't know of anyone else that's saying it that also has the practical method who isn't just saying, oh, it's me and only me. Um, no, I'm saying it's me and it could be anybody that accepts it and wants to try to do it. Okay. Uh, all right. So be, before before uh, Mike and I dive into our questions uh, here, we uh, obviously the well, actually all three of us met on TikTok. Uh, but you know, you, you've you've made this very uh, publicly known. You know, on social media, what your stance is, what your uh, what your belief is. Uh, we we did pull one of your original intro videos um, from uh, from TikTok. That that way. That way, uh, the viewers understand what we're talking about. Yeah, uh, yeah. And and, um, and and we did that because it's it's on your your page, so we you know we we assume that that's you know uh, for public knowledge. But yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, if if uh, producers, if you can uh, roll that real quick for us, please. I believe that I am the second coming of Christ, the eighth incarnation of Buddha. I understand the weight of my words. I understand many of you will be offended. Many of you will find it laughable but I hope that a few of you will consider the possibility that my words are true. So I'm asking you to challenge me, ask me anything, and I will answer any and all relevant questions. I wanna test my hypothesis just as much as you do. Lastly, understand that I am not the only, but the first of many. And one of my missions is to show you how to awaken this understanding in yourself. As of today, I'll begin my teachings on this platform. I hope that you'll join me. All right, we got everybody pulled up. So, so that was one of Mark's original videos on TikTok, and uh, I know it's one of the first ones that I um, that I viewed. And uh, you know, I, I've been asking a lot of the questions so far, and I, I want to make sure I respect uh, Mike's time on here as well. So, before I ask any of uh, mine, uh, Mike, what what uh, what questions do you have for Mark? Sure. I got a, I got a couple. Uh, I guess I would start off with like a yes or no here. Uh, do you have supernatural powers or do you claim to have supernatural powers? I have some small supernatural powers at the moment and they will grow in time. Yes. Sure. Would you be able to demonstrate any of those to me? It's not like uh, electricity flying out of my hands. It's more like hands on healing. And um, this is going to sound, I guess, kind of crazy, but pulling dark energies off of people. And so one might call them spirits. Other people might call them psychological trauma. But I'm able to, by means other than practical, release spiritual energy off of somebody. Okay. Have you done this in the past? Yeah. Could you could you demonstrate that? Did you document it, or did? Well, I'm I'm curious. Did you feel it would be would be uh, wise and what your to accomplish your goal to document something like that? Well, I documented on like on a notebook. I keep kind of like a like I guess a clinical notebook. Mm -hmm. But as far as video, it's more out of respect for the person and their like injury uh, to not have it filmed. I mean, I've thought about it, but it's got to be someone who's willing to be filmed while I'm doing that as well. Sure. And so, what's I, more, what would be more important, the goal or the willingness of the person to be filmed? The most important thing is to heal them. Sure. So then, well, then why why wouldn't you want to get that message out? Well, because I'm not and, trying and to impress. Way. Yeah, I'm not trying to impress anybody. I'm not trying oh, to prove. No, yeah. yeah you know what I mean? And I'm not trying to prove that I can do it. In fact, like I'm like that's I don't want that attention. And think about it this way. 
Um, I can't go around hands on healing all 8 billion people on the planet kind of thing. I do gotcha. it for people around me and I want to do it on a larger scale. And like a Christ isn't something where you just bounce in and you have ultimate power. It's something you build up to. It's focus and concentration. And so it's a build up. And I think in the future, sure. these things will become more important. Though I do want to stress that the miracle working is not the focus because uh, it's the message and that we all need to be doing this for ourselves. And if we all learn this, we can help heal each other to, together. And there's an exponential synergistic effect to us all learning this. But I, I don't see a reason why in the future, if people are not, or people are comfortable with me doing it um, and video, videoing it and documenting it, that would be a thing. But like I yeah. said, it's, it's, have you heard of Reiki? Have you heard of Reiki or hands-on healing? Uh, no. So Reiki and hands-on healing is essentially where this comes from. There's a lot of different like names they call it. It's the movement of chi or Holy Spirit. And what I see that as a scientific thing is the conscious movement of like photon and electron uh, through your body and being able to emit particular frequencies in order to remedy ailments because everything boils down to that subatomic level. And so I think that's what's happening. But yeah, it's uh, it's something I have not documented yet. And so that's why I don't really boast. I don't talk about that on TikTok either because mm -hmm. I have not documented it. And so it wouldn't be right for me to start saying, yeah, I can do this and that. I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna keep it real, I'm gonna be genuine with you. Okay, what's your uh, level on, uh, or I guess better ask, um, what would convince you that you didn't have these supernatural powers? Um, Did anything well, shake that? No, because there, it, it's been objective. Like other people have experienced it. Like I had a friend who had migraines all the time and I told him to come in, to, we were at work and I say, next time you come in, let me know. If you have a migraine, I'll work it out. And he put my hands on his head and it was gone in 10 seconds. Mind you, this is an anecdotal story that I'm telling you. There's no sure, reason, sure. But there's it, no but reason my, to believe me, yeah. No, no, and that's not, that's not what I'm getting at. Um, I hope is my video it looks like it's kind of messing up on my end. Hopefully it's not. Uh, but if not, uh, my my thing to do that it's to see, uh, you know, would you be willing to maybe consider the possibility of a consequence? I mean, a, a coincidence. Sorry. Oh, absolutely. And and I and I try to maintain skepticism. I'll try to maintain skepticism for this whole path. And that's another thing. Like in the video, I say. I want people to test my hypothesis because as much as I can know in my heart or in my mind, I can't know because I'm having a subjective experience, right? And so you always have to remember that too. So absolutely, uh, if I wake up from this and it's a dream, obviously it didn't happen. But as far as I can tell, um, those experience I had with those people are real and they're objective because they share that story. And I could call them up now, for instance, if I could get a hold of them and they would corroborate that story. Okay. Um, so when you say like, I could be Jesus, um, when, I mean, in your, in your terms, like I could be Jesus. Cause I really wanted, really wanted to try you. You just mean that you don't mean, uh, let me ask. Okay. If I wanted to be Mark, could I, if I really tried hard like you? No, no. So Christ, like I said, Christ wasn't a last name for Jesus. It was a title. It was, it was like Jesus, the anointed and and, mo and like most historians say, Jesus wasn't even his name either. It was like Yahshua Ben-Hur or one of the, yeah, it, was, it wasn't Jesus because the letter J wasn't even in the vocabulary at that point. But um, no, I, I mean, Christ as, as a title, it's like sir or, or, or king. Christ means to be anointed. So I, I'm saying that anybody can be anointed. And, and the process of anointment is actually a, a biochemical conscious one. Okay. Um, I, I wanted to dive into a little bit more the questions I really care the most about here. And um, I wanted to know, do you still have these uh, prophetic dreams? Not as much anymore because the things I'm told to do are much bigger. And I don't, I only have the prophetic dreams once I've completed a task. Mm -hmm. And so uh, this last task has been the most difficult for me to, to accept and and take on and, and you hear these auditor like you hear like a an auditory voice no no most of them are dreams but every now and then it, it's it's hard to explain but it's as if uh the word is spoken to my spirit or heart and it's not english or any language it's a feeling which then i have to sit with for a long period of time 
and translate into words. And that might turn into a hundred or a thousand words, but it's a feeling, and the feeling is 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 quickly converted into a, a, a series of ideas, but then they will be matched by dreams. Okay. So how how would you, Mark, go about differentiating your own independent thoughts and the belief that say something was speaking to you or giving you these visions? Like how would you how would you know the difference? How would you be able to do that? Could you build something to test for? Well, it actually lies at the fundamental of my belief. And the fundamental of my belief is that the entire universe is mental. Um, there is no distinction between creator and us. We are just a facet of that diamond. And so I'm not getting information, so to speak, from some external force. All I'm doing is tapping into the power of my own brain to recall or call upon information that I'm networked to across the entire universe. Um, I think all brains are basically what we call Wi-Fi together. And I think all matter in the universe. We all know that all matter is connected by gravity um, in some way or another. Um, I think there's more to it. And I think all I'm really doing is tapping into a supercomputer that I'm already plugged into. And so it's not an external thing that's happening. It's actually just a command code I'm giving my own processor, which is linked to all the other processors in the universe and collecting that information. I think the DNA of me connects to every single one of my ancestors and I carry their their entire story within my genes. I think that's how sure. glossolalia works, right? People get into comas and wake up with new languages. Probably, like let's say it's French, they probably had a French ancestor and that's written in the DNA, which is in their DNA. So mm -hmm. I think it's actually an internal process anyway. Could I, uh, I'll ask one last question. I'm, I think I'm having video issues. I'm gonna unplug it, hand it over to Aud uh, Austin so that he can do this, but I want one last question real quick. Would you be mad if I was skeptical that you are even, that you even, I don't want to offend you at all because I'm a skeptic. So I'm skeptical yeah. on a lot of ang on all of a lot of angles here. Yeah, uh, the yeah. first one, first one being, I'm skeptical that you even believe what you are saying is true. Yeah. No, I understand like, that. I, I'm I'm skeptical that you could just be a troll. We and I don't really care. Like we can have people come on here and people could take advantage of. Oh, hey, they got trolled. I don't care about that. I, we genuinely want people to talk about what they believe because it could help someone, at least one person. And it's fun. I just think it's a fun thing to do in my spare time. I just love to do it. But yeah. does that bother you for you to hear people say that? I mean, do you you kind of understand where they're coming from? Oh, absolutely, man. Look, completely. Like your your subjective experience. You have no reason to believe what I'm saying. I can't shoot sparks out of my hands. I can't show a miracle to you right now. All I can do is give you the wisdom or that I've learned or the quote unquote wisdom, right? I can only give you the knowledge of things that I believe I have attained and draw connections to quantum mechanics and to ancient historical texts and say, see, they were talking about the same thing, the universe is mental or whatever. But yeah, you're, I know I have no, it, it makes complete sense that you wouldn't believe me. Um, but it also, there's there's something to be said about someone who does as well and so it's just the subjective experience no not at all like i understand like i said in that first video i understand how crazy my claims sounds i understand it's laughable and i understand uh it can be inflammatory as well so mark i'm, I'm going to uh probably, probably take it a step further <laughs> uh than, than mike did and and uh, I, I don't have you have you watched some of our previous episodes? I was watching a little bit uh, of one this morning. Uh, which what was his name? I can't I can't even recall what his name was, but I watched a little bit of what you guys. Were doing. I think it was okay. a theist that time. OK, so, so, you know, we're 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 chill, you know, and we're not we're not here to try to get anybody. Um, but but when certain claims are made, we're going to make we're going to ask the diff, difficult questions, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah. Because uh, you know, like I say, when there's an extraordinary claim, there needs to be extraordinary evidence, you know, to to back up that claim. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I'm going to do, and I, I think um, I, I think it's fitting with just you and I on the screen right now. The first thing I want to dig into is is you talked about, uh, you know, uh, with uh, I, uh, ayahuasca. I can never say that right, but ayahuasca and um, Saint Pedro, which is basically masculine, uh, so uh, or masculine, some people call it. Uh, I'm very, very familiar with just about every drug because until I decided to get my life in order, that was my life. <laughs> uh, so when, when you share those things, I know the effect that that has on the brain. P 
period. And, and you can tell me whatever you want. And uh, Tom, Dick and Harry can tell me whatever they want. I, I know the effect that it has. And you can go and research all the studies done uh, on the human brain after uh, experiencing the, those uh, the, uh, drugs, no matter what you want to say, the drugs. Um, so my first problem with, with your with your claim is that you you have um, you have consumed or partaken of these drugs that can alter the mind. Um, they can alter your thinking. Now, after those experiences, you now build this equation that it equals a spiritual uh, awakening or uh, experience or, you know, wh- whatever, however you want to title it. That's my first point of contention, because just because you were on a drug and experienced something, and I did a lot of shrooms, I did a lot of LSD, uh, I, um, I did peyote, like you don't, um, you don't get to just say, well, I did this while I was on a drug. So it's a God or a being or something like that. So given that information, how can you demonstrate or show anyone that that was a God experience and not just a altering the mind by a substance? Well, so, well, two things. Um, I didn't gather the entire uh, belief that I had just from that experience. I had already felt it deeply for a long time and I had a lot of experiences before that led me to that. It was a big step, maybe even an apex step, uh, we could argue. But it's not the, uh, it wasn't the only step or the ultimate uh, that led to the theory of, of, of that led me to the belief. Uh, there was a lot that led up to that. But also, I don't distinguish a difference between God and here, me. And so I didn't see it as an external religious experience. I saw it as an internal experience where I was tapping into divinity, which already lies within me if that makes sense. And so I I didn't think I was taking it and communicating with the gods outside of me. I believe that was opening up new parts of my mind, which would release the inner God within me. It's kind of like Michelangelo's painting with God almost touching Adam's finger. Interestingly enough, the cloud is shaped just like the brain that God lies on. And I believe that was done intentionally to tell us that God is us, God is in our brain. And so, yeah, I don't think that drug took me to talk with an external guy in the clouds, I think it helped me access new parts of my brain. It allowed me to to build and develop on what it is to be a human being. Uh, okay, so so like I said, I, I've had experience with those substances, substances and and ones like them, uh, and, and I can you know I can say that I went into those quote unquote trips with certain preconceived thoughts. And I had really good trips and I had really bad trips. I remember the last time I took it, it was the last time I took it because I was like, I'm never doing that shit again. <laughs> you know, um, you know, because it was um, <laughs> it, it, it was just absolutely terrible. Yeah. But again, whether you had whether you had a preconceived notion that you may or may not have been uh the return of a messiah, a Christ, a Buddha, a Thor, uh, you know, uh what whatever. You, you can't, you, we can't equate your experience on those substances to validation that you are a ma- messiah or a reincarnation. Uh, th- that's, that's not valid. So what I need to hear from you is how do we take your, your assertion that you already had this, you know, uh, you, you already had this stance or, or this belief, I'm sorry, that you already had this belief, then you took this mind altering drug and you know so that somehow confirmed it or opened up your mind or whatever like we 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 need to know and i need to know what makes that real what what makes that valid because anybody could make that claim like I- anybody could do this why 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 are you any different than anybody else why is that real all right so um one thing i agree with you uh what i what i've said and what i what i'm saying i am hasn't been validated at all like, like I've had made a couple of TikToks. I've talked about a couple of things, like how to start the process of becoming Christ. I believe it deeply in me, but no, I haven't been validated. And that's going to be a process for me. Um, 
for me, the Christ is a couple things. And it's not just like, it's not just working miracles, for instance. It's actually providing the information that's going to save us from the terrible situation we're in. And so my validation will occur over a year's time, maybe, as I help to rebuild the world, as all these old ways fall down, all these evil ways are destroyed, and we rebuild our, our civilization to, into a better way. Being the savior, being the Christ or the anointed has 95% to do with the work that needs to be done to improve the world. And a lot of that is practical, right? Being a Christ isn't just I wave a wand and magically. I, I, don't, I don't think that's the case. I think same thing with Buddha. Buddha. Buddha didn't go around just going poof and making things better, right? He spoke to people. He taught the lessons. He taught the wisdom. This isn't just a supernatural thing. In fact, the supernatural aspect of it is maybe what we'll say five or ten percent. That ninety percent is the message, the message that's that that, that and that each individual person is going to do their own work to build a better world. And so, yeah, I'm not validated. My validation will come as I'm able to speak the message and help build the world up to the place it could be. One, I have one more question before Mike jumps back in. Okay, so. Another thing, too, that I think it's, it's important. Well, one, when I took those drugs, I didn't immediately assume completely that I was that. I mean, that thing happened years and years ago, and I just made the announcement uh, mid-April uh, mid of this year. So this, this, this uh, episode with the, I call it a medicine, but yeah, it's also a drug in Western definition. This happened years ago. It was actually, like I said, another step in a series of steps. Um, it's been many years since that that I decided that I was like, I'm going to say it out loud. It, it, like I said, I wrestled with it for, for a lot of time after that experience too. So it wasn't something where the next day, it wasn't the dawning of that belief. It was still a wrestling for years with the potential for that to be a belief. And I knew that I had to ground it in some sort of objectivity as much as I possibly could, empiricism, uh, scientific method, if I could. I tried to test it in a bunch of different ways and root it in some kind of substantial uh, uh, reasoning. Uh, and I just want to say one thing, too, is uh, the consumption of things like sugar, right, and caffeine, these are also mind-altering substances, right? Not in the same way. They're not hallucinogenic, right? Yeah, yeah, but, yeah let's, not, let's not pretend it's anywhere close to that. Oh, I, was, I wasn't. I yeah, um, yeah. was that's why, that's why I said okay. what I said. Okay. That's why I put the footnote in there. So, but sugar is very, very toxic to the brain, it has the same effects as cocaine. And when you get off of sugar, it's unbelievable. Like, like, like I've done it and I've heard of other people, you feel like you're dying for three days. It's terrible to get off it. And when you get out of it, you're in a completely different mental state that feels nothing like you were before. And so I guess my counter argument is, is it potential is it potentially true that all of the, like the alcohol and the sugar and the toxic foods are actually causing people to be in a lower state of consciousness and in, in, in a state of mental illness that they're not realizing that this is actually the, the fundamental truth? If you go to Tibet and someone walks up to you and says, I am God, the next person will probably be like, glad you finally figured it out. If you go yep. around Western society yep. and say, I am God, people are like, you need to check into uh, into a mental institution. So we also have to remember there's a big cultural context there. It's okay to say that you're God within a certain culture or religion, and you don't go around losing your mind, beating people up and commit crimes. But then you say in another culture, and, and you're deemed as potentially crazy, right? The DSM-5, I think the DSM-4, I'm not sure if it's in 5, says that the belief that one, that, that someone is God is a signature for potential psychosis, right? But like I said, if you're in Tibet, if you're a Buddhist and you're in the temple and you say, hey, I am God, everyone's like, yeah, of course you are. And so we have to remember there's a cultural context, but that we also remember that most of us are heavily um, drugged by things like sugar and caffeine and alcohol. And right. And these yeah, have you, you don't think that mental... those th you don't think that those things are well understood within the realm of neuroscience? I think they're understood pretty well, but not by the common person who consumes it every day. I think if sure, anybody but, had enough knowledge about the neurological effects of sugar and 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 enough restraint, no one would be eating sugar. It's a terrible but, for you. Sure, and and I get I get with what what you're saying there, but are you trying to elude that if I don't 
if I stop consuming sugar, let's just say I, I consume sugar, which I really don't, yeah. but let's say that I consume sugar. Um, well, at least I've stopped consuming sugar, I should put. <laughs> and it does feel great. It really does. I, I, will, I will say that. How uh, is that the filter that's making me not see the reality that you see? I mean, I'm, I'm trying to understand what you're... What yeah, you're it's at. well, it's one of the biological filters. There's a lots of things, right? You, there's there's an intellectual process that has that is independent of all those things. But I would argue that the consumption of sugar limits our ability to think clearly, right? And so I guess the counter argument I'm making is as much as me taking that ayahuasca could have sent me into some kind of psychotic spiral, the daily consumption of a lot of things that are deemed legal drug, legal foods in our society now also can have potentially damaging effects to our brain and limit our ability to think clearly. You know what I mean? So there, there's a give and take there. Sure. Yes, there's a, I, there's a I guess I don't find the, the link between that and the cultural references, especially when you mentioned the Tibet thing, because what you're saying there is someone over there could say, you know, that they are God or whatever. And I guess based on the presumption that they don't have those types of, we'll call them filters that are on their brain or whatever. Um, I, I, that doesn't make it true. Cause like if their culture was to say slavery is okay, that doesn't make it right. It doesn't make it true. If their culture was to say that the sun goes or that we revolve around the, uh, or I'm sorry, the sun revolves around us and we're a geocentric uh, universe. That doesn't make it true. So yeah, it doesn't but, really matter about about these cultural references. What matters is the epistemic warrant. Well, there's two things in why it matters. It doesn't make it true, but it also doesn't make it untrue. Is one thing. Sure, and, I, but, but but you're talking and, to somebody. Well, hold on. But just real quick, you're talking to somebody who specifically takes the null hypothesis. I don't. I don't say this is true. This is false. I'm trying to get you to show me that it is true. Yeah, and like I said, the validation will come with what I do, the work that happens. Like it just it it's there's nothing I can do like besides have a conversation with you and explain I, that. I guess so, but when I ask you about the demonstrations, it didn't sound like it's it's very important for you to actually make that part of your mission. See if it was me yeah. or anybody else, I think that would be a very crucial element to the goal here. And then when I ask you, you give me the answer that is uh, well, I did want to get into the personal life. I think that that person would be, you know, maybe I'm wrong here, but I think that person would be wanting to say, hey, this is a good thing here. Let me not be fucking selfish and let's get this out for everybody. But it sounds like to me, it, I mean, that's such an easy defeater. It's such an easy thing. You can do this thing. You could show it to somebody and then people would believe you. Why, why would you waste your time having a two hour conversation about it on a show if you could just demonstrate it? Yeah, so I'm what I'm trying. I'm not trying to convince anybody. What I'm trying to do is deliver a message. Um, I think that you know it, it can come in time that people will appreciate it more. And you, you have to understand that when I say Christ, it's like you have to really suspend what you think about a, a, a guy coming down from the clouds with a white horse with a tattoo that says King of Kings and Lord of Lords or whatever it is. Dispense with all of that. All I'm trying to do is provide the wisdom to people to shape the world into a better place. The world savior is someone who enacts change through the spoken word and then excites all other people to do so. Sure, but, so much but, with something like, but with something that would be like in similar to Jainism or something like that and say we attach some supernatural elements to all this. It doesn't really matter to me what it the like, sure it's great that it's positive but I care about whether or not it's true and then when it pressed it sounds like it take you take every step to avoid that from actually being known and I don't know if you see the tag at the beginning of our video but it's investigation uh you know the truth has nothing to fear you know I I say it is you know if something's true you shouldn't fear from investigation I know me and my buddy uh Steve are 100% in agreement on that you might not be but what but but why why limit yourself? I, that's what I'm not understanding here. Why would you want to limit these uh, these things? Um, that... My objective isn't to convince anybody. My objective is to teach people. Well, I'm, but, I'm, not, I'm not here to like you know throw electricity out of my hands. Say you've got to believe me. You got to believe me. I'm but how here can you teach anybody I... if you don't give them epistemic warrant to 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 un, to have knowledge of what you're saying? 
Well, I think I've provided a lot of context, and if we have more time, I could explain it further about how I think quantum mechanics folds into this and how I think the power of belief yeah. folds into mm -hmm. it. Uh, but my, my, well, my first question, uh, Mark here, and I, and I want to ask one or two more, and then we need to get into Q and A's because we've had a ton yeah, yeah. of questions. Uh, my first one is if, if Mike or myself or anyone provided you demonstrable evidence or proof or, you know, whatever you require, uh, to do so, could your mind be changed? You know, not at this point, and I'll tell you why. Because, like I said, I think being Christ is practical. I don't think, like, there may be some supernatural. I believe I can do hands-on healing in Reiki, but so do many um, cardiac uh, departments and hospitals. Like, they're showing that Reiki is having positive health effects on people. And so I can tell you, all, yeah, I healed this person, I healed that person, I can't prove it. But we do know that legitimate medical institutions are respecting Reiki and hands-on healing. And so, I'd like, like I'd I like said, to that's, see that. that's really just that's really just an aside. Like I said, being Christ has a lot to do with the practical application of living a virtuous life and being able to teach those principles to others. And so, not at this point, I don't think I could be convinced otherwise because, like I said, it's it's a practical. I believe it to be a practical role, and all it takes is a desire to help the world and to learn these, I guess, ancient fundamentals of of human behavior and how to build societies and how to govern those societies. Like I said, a lot of this has to do with practical application of of um, a fundamental wisdom about how to carry oneself uh, in in a virtuous and potentially pious way. So, so I want to revert back to the the video we posted earlier. So, uh, and, and just to be fair, uh, so we're fair across across the board. Uh, Mark, what is your what is your dish definition of a hypothesis? Well, it's something where basically it's got to be tested. Yeah, I, I know where you're going. I know I know where you're getting from with this. And I did say test my hypothesis, and I've been testing it. And throughout that time, I've come to an understanding. In that time period, I've done this from the beginning when I made the announcement to now, I've accepted it because I've gone through the ringer and I'm like, yeah, I still feel this. And I feel it even more strong after all of the, all of the uh, questioning, after all of the like, you know, craziness and all the like negative, like negative comments I got, I feel even more strongly than I did before. Okay. So, yeah, and, I, I, I have, an, I have an your, issue. And, I have an issue with that. One, one second, Mike. So one, one of your more recent videos, uh, Mark, and I want to see if this is part of the uh, oh, yours, not mine, but your confirmation of, of, uh, your your stance or or you know coming to uh, you know f f fulfilling your belief and, and not going from a hypothesis but but an actual uh, a belief or buy-in uh, you you had uh, posted a video on social media about that you you felt like you needed these reusable bowls these plastic bowls in your house yeah. um, and you said that in your mind that you were able to think them into your home absolutely um and i i can tell you that uh <laughs> uh i've had that happen numerous times uh 38 years old numerous times by accident um yeah. it's, all, it's all of a sudden like well where did all these damn plastic bowls come from well it was the same thing you said well i went to this person's house and they had dinner and they gave me leftovers and I went over here and they, they made, you know, I went to work and this person made too much food. So, you know, they said here, you know, you guys take some home. Um, you know, it, it's, it's really difficult for me to, uh, to listen, not just you, but anybody listening to you or anybody say, you know, well, I thought this into existence, um, you know, these plastic bowls, uh, because I wanted plastic bowls and now I did it through mind power when really it just came down to, um, circumstance and a sequence of events happened in life. And now all of a sudden you have a few plastic bowls um, that to me, trying, trying to pl place, uh, um, you know, the, the these uh, supernatural um, claims uh, on, on, on plastic bowls ending up in your house from, and you admitted that you went to their house and had dinner is crazy to me. Well, yeah. So well, let me hit you with this idea. 
One, I don't think uh, people give themselves an opportunity to see the world as magic and see the world as something kind of more amazing than this static, uh, mute, uh, very just material, nothing happening on the outside world that we that man is just meant to measure and conquer and build with, right? I think that we've lost the magic and adventure to life for one. And so two, imagine this. Imagine that you're on a road and it's icy and you hit an ice patch. There's a guardrail ahead of you and there's a turn coming up. What's gonna happen if you stare at the guardrail and you worry about hitting the guardrail only? Well, you're probably gonna crash into the guardrail. But what happens if you think about making that turn and everything you need to, need to do to get there? you're probably more likely to make that turn and not hit the guardrail and stay on the road. So taking that, um, that, that, that gross comparison and let's take it down to a more, to a more finite, um, more uh, meticulous example. If I got up in the morning and I told myself, I need this thing, and my subconscious heard it, that giant brain, which we know has a lot more processing power than, than we're normally in access of or could even contemplate, but uh, I believe scientists say that the brain is still the most complex uh, uh, piece of matter in the known universe. There may be some quantum uh, computers underneath the military bases that are a little more complicated, but as far as we know, uh, it's, it's one of the or the most organized pieces of matter. And so if I tell myself something simple like, I want this thing, how do we know that there's not a million processes running in my brain to make that happen? And every single step I take, every single word I speak, lives to accomplishing that goal. And so it's not supernatural. I don't think it's supernatural. I think there's a lot going on in the brain that we can tap into, that gestures that I make, the time that I show up at somebody's house, all can impact the potentiality for me to acquire those plastic bowls. I know it's a silly example, but it's, but it's a relevant example nonetheless. Well, but 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 Mark, not 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 only is it you know with all due respect, not only is it silly, it's one hundred percent unfounded, and you can't you can't demonstrate any evidence that suggests that your mind worked those bowls into your home. That that's that's my point. You can't like you can't do that. And when you make extraordinary claims, again, you need extraordinary evidence, and that's what we want to shine. Uh, that's what we want to shine light on is that that's like th those are some th those are big claims, right? And and for people that do want. You know, you said you know well we've missed out on uh, in the in or on the magic um, in this world. Um, well, that means we just all get fooled because that's essentially what magic is. I don't want magic in my life. I want I want I want as many true things in my life as possible. Um, I, I don't want things that we just conjure up and we believe are real. I want to know. That's why even as a Christian, I don't want to be a Christian more because we we're, it's I'm a believer. I don't I don't want to be a believer. I want to be a knower. You know, I, I want to know that these things are real. I want to know that they're tangible, um, and I, I want to know that they exist. So, um, the the last thing I'm saying, I know uh, Mike had uh, one more before the Q and A. If we can keep it short, guys, I apologize. But uh, yeah. La lastly, yeah, it ties in with all that. So, la last we lastly for me and then Mark, what we can dig into some more uh, in, in the after show. But uh, uh, you, you know, even even though obviously we uh, we don't agree on worldview, um, and um, uh, I, I I disagree that you are uh, a messiah or anything like that. I do I, I do believe that you're a good uh, you're a good guy. I've enjoyed talking to you. Um, you've always been cool as hell. Every time I talk to you, even though I, I have a wildly <laughs> different uh, worldview um, than you do, I appreciate you coming to the roundtable and sitting and chatting with us tonight. Um, that being said, uh, Mike, uh, you go ahead and get your question in. I'll close this out. Yeah. So it's not really a question. It's more of a statement and more of a summation of of the conversation in a sense and you can respond back you know for sure you sounds like everything that you, you've set up makes it so that it couldn't be falsifiable uh what, and then even the statement about magic the statement about you as a kid which i saw a video on the TikTok when i was kind of trying to get some research done uh beforehand that you just if you believed it to be true then it would become true which is like the antithesis of how i operate and how the basis of anybody that would consider themselves a methodological naturalist would operate. Um, these types of, in my opinion, like these lowering your standards this low and then not providing false falsifiability in your hypothesis is for me, it's, 
it that's how people get fooled by con men that's how people get bought in uh you know timeshares that's how people get fooled when they go to vegas on things it's, this is how it, it's just not having good standards of evidence i mean this is uh in my opinion, the most crucial thing I feel like we could have as a human is to value what we know to be true and what, or at least to the highest degree we could be certain, because I don't think we could ever be 100% certain, but I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I just don't see any form of you allowing this to be falsified. It sounds like you're putting a proposition up and then packaging it around what's called a panacea, and if you're not familiar with what a panacea is, it's basically just like retrofitting your answer to what what you would want it to be it's an all-encompassing non-answer and i don't want to preach at you or anything like this but it just sound, for me it just sounds like you're, you've lowered your standards of evidence very low and it worries me well there was several times in the conversation that i told you that i totally believe that a lot of your guys counter arguments and theories could potentially be true but i keep going back to this and you guys miss this or, or you skip over it I believe this is a practical application of knowledge and wisdom in the world. Being a savior is seeing the broken things in, 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 our, in our society and providing solutions to get there in leading the, the march to a better world. Um, my claim will be validated as I apply my wisdom and knowledge and help people grow and clean up their act, right? get rid of trauma, which I believe is, is the number one reason for psychological issues is, com and is compounded trauma, lifting that compounded trauma off, healing people mentally, physically, by teaching them how to eat correctly, going through our society and saying, what's wrong with capitalism? What's wrong with, our, what's wrong, wrong with other political systems? What's wrong with our, 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 our economies around the world? What's wrong with our religion? So our religions need reform. Like these are very practical things. Um, you guys brought up the supernatural stuff. And all I mentioned was basically Reiki, which, like I said, is being used in hospitals. And so I don't know what parts of my argument are I, I block you from being able to falsify. Well, besides, well, no, so, well hang on, hang on, hang so, on, hang on. And so um, I talk about the placebo effect. And I'm sure there's a lot of good research that says when you put your mind to things, you can actualize it. If you put your mind to being an engineer and go to school, you become an engineer. If you put your mind to different things, you can become those things. You put your mind to getting something, you can get it. It's all about the buffer time to get there, time and space. All I'm sure. saying is That's all I'm saying is that your brain Please let me respond has the potential. Hang on. Your brain has the potential to reduce that time and space to acquire things and to become things in the world. All I'm saying is we're not tapping into all the power in this guy right here. Not that we're calling on some sky daddy from the clouds. I'm not and saying so that I've been, at all. I've been very, I've been very, I got to answer all your questions. I've been very transparent too. It's like, I know, yeah, of course I could, I could be crazy. Absolutely. And yes, I could be a con man. And there's no reason for you guys to believe. It. Um, I haven't denied any of those things. I, I haven't been like, oh no, because God told, I'm not, I'm not putting any of those barriers or layers up. I totally accept the fact that a lot of what I'm saying sounds crazy and I could be crazy and all those other things. I haven't I haven't argued that at all. But two things that I really want to really hit on that is that with what you were talking about in regards to uh, which you called Reiki, um, however you pronounce that. I'd like first off I'd like to see some some any kind of documentation for that would be cool. But second of okay. all, um, we we have medical proof. Or I mean we have uh, scientific proof that prayer can help people. You know, and especially in like a cave, you can uh, decrease the amount of oxygen you use or or, or things where where it, where it allows you to be more calm in a state where you would need to be more calm. It, but it's not the actual act of what they're doing that is causing the conclusion. I mean, that that's a uh, conflating a lot there. Uh, and then when you use the um, example you use about being an engineer, that's just a false equivalency fallacy because I know that an engineer exists and I get what you're saying, the distinction between your worldview of being that person. But I, I asked you, my, one of my first questions was, do you have supernatural powers? And you said yes. And so that, to me, is where that ties into where I can have the conversation as if I would with somebody about their God or whatever, because you are necessarily tying in the supernatural, for which we don't have an example of. And then the only thing that bothers me is that the one thing that could separate me from believing you is you demonstrating that. 
But for some reason, I just don't know why that's not important. And then I will finish it off with, I think you're an awesome person. So don't take kind of my hostility in a negative way. I'm just more so like, I want to press you on this because I feel like it. I would be not doing my due diligence if I just asked questions and that was it and not explain how, why, or where I think the fundamental flaws are. And it only worries me because like think people say stuff like this in the comments. I'm going to pull it up. And this kind of goes to what I'm saying. God must remain epistemologically distant to allow for moral choice and voluntary love. That is indistinguishable from a reality where that God does not exist. And for anyone to expect that claim with what you're saying, like putting your hand on someone and then there could be coincidence that the migraines could go away. That That is physically possible. In fact, migraines tend to go away. We, we tend to see that eventually happen. The timing of when you touch their head and that could have been coincidental. And it's not even a very miraculous thing because I could do that to somebody and the same thing could happen. But for me, it's like, I feel like you're driving this huge wedge in between a, uh, how we could actually obtain the knowledge, especially in regards to the supernatural claims and then the reality. And yep, that's and, kind of where I'm at. And, and guys, for time, again, uh, we can dive into some of this in the after party. I want to get to the questions. So uh, I'll, I'll say this because you you uh, you brought up the placebo effect again. And uh, the, the one thing, Mark, if, if uh, maybe we have a, an agreement is, is, you know, when I deconverted, like one of my slogans is uh, religion, period, the original placebo. Um, that, that, you know, um, I, if there's anything we agree on, it's that. I, I believe religion, I don't believe there's any good evidence that there is a God. I, I believe religions, uh, uh, all of them are a placebo effect and they give people a safety blanket to make them feel safe um, and feel comforted uh, when there's really nothing out there. It's in their brain which if that's what they need to feel good and be happy, cool. I'm not trying to take that from them. I'm really not. I'm just trying to challenge where they find their truth. You know, where, where, where are they, where are they driving their truth? So uh, we, we can get out in the, into the after party. So that being said, uh, producers, let's get in the Q and a, start popping them up and then we'll go to the after party and, and we'll go a little longer. We try to stay at an hour and a half. We're going to go a little longer tonight because we had a great conversation with Mark. Um, but what are some questions we'll, we'll get through. Uh, a few of them, and those that want to stick around for the after party, uh, there'll be a new feed go up uh, about uh, four or five minutes after we're done here, and uh, we'll get that shit started. So, questions? Jesus, Mike, if you can help me read the questions, because my my contacts are all screwed up. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, for someone who believes in a supernatural, or I'm sorry, a spiritual realm. Uh, how do you know that it isn't an evil entity that has given you these experiences, miracles, and visions to cause suffering and chaos disguised as good? Mm. Am I my mic on? That's an excellent question. Uh, I'm going to tell a little story that uh, I might get a, an angry email at, but he'll be okay. I had spoken one time with uh, uh, Dr. Strassman. He wrote DMT, the spirit, spirit molecule. You'd be surprised how easy it is to communicate with these authors and they're excellent people and they, they give a lot of insight. And I was talking to him about the strange experiences that happened in that one. This really connects a lot of ways to what you're saying. Uh, these DMT experiences, a lot of these entities that came, they were kind of tricksters. Some seemed good, some seemed bad, but you can never really tell. And so this sort of situation occurred. And so I had reached out to him saying, you did a lot of this research. I have a lot of these, these experiences without any DMT or any kind of drugs. What do you think is happening? And this is something interesting he said to me. He said, um, you have to know who the true one God is. And it's not something external. If anything comes to you externally, claiming that it's God or angel, do not believe it. No matter what it is. I don't care if it's the seven ray angels. I don't care if it's like Lucifer saying, no, I'm really the good guy or any of that. Anything, anything. You can't trust anything external. The true one God is you, and it's your internal voice of reason. Once you connect deeply with that, that voice, that voice is within you, and you can tell the difference because it's not an external thing coming out. It's in, it starts here, and it arises outward as you desire to become a better person and rise higher. Cool. All right. And, uh, um... Thank you for that, Mark. Next, uh, from the producers, next question. <laughs> I spell TikTok wrong. 
TikTok. I don't know why everyone spells TikTok wrong, but it's all good. I don't um, fault you there. I, uh, so, so, I mean, it's not, it's not like Roof is on the app, but whatever. Uh, how do I? How does Mark teach his virtues to the world other than TikTok if he's not trying to evangelize? I think he, yes. Yeah, um, is he still there? Oh, I'm sorry. I, saw, I thought I saw him drop from our stream for a second. Who, me? Yeah. Yeah, so, I'm sorry. So, I thought I saw you sorry. drop. No, it's okay. Uh, so I'm on TikTok, uh, YouTube. I do a little bit on Instagram. And, you know, I, I speak the word to friends and, and, and family as I find the opportunity or get into it. But, like, modes of communication, I guess, like, no, it's not just TikTok, but I mean, what other ways is there? I can I do a little bit of writing too. Maybe I'll publish some sort of book eventually, or just uh, do like a PDF online writing articles. But any way that I see that there's an opportunity, TikTok's big, right? Because TikTok's uh, highly unregulated uh, relative to a lot of other social media platforms. So I think you're able to say a lot more without getting a lot of restriction. So I prefer TikTok for a lot of that because it's sort of a wild west of social media and it does give you the opportunity to have more freedom of speech, I think overall. And so that's like a preferred platform, but yeah, I do some stuff on YouTube, Instagram. And like I say, spoken word with, with, with friends and family. Okay. All right. Um, so for uh, the other ones that had questions, uh, we are, uh, give us about four or five minutes. We're going to create a new feed. Um, that way uh, for editing purposes, we can make sure this, uh, this conversation with Mark uh, is is contained within about an hour and sure. forty minutes here, um, but we'll jump on yeah. there. And uh, Mike, thank you always for uh, being my co-host. Yeah, and, man, uh, Mark, this is uh, Mark... much better than the uh, vet visit I had that I paid money for nothing. So I appreciate being on. <laughs> well, I hope this is better than a vet visit. Um, yeah, it was that was my day today. So, uh, but uh, Mark, again, uh, thank you for coming on tonight, sharing your time. Uh, with us and I know anytime somebody comes on you're taking time out of your day your night and uh, and we appreciate that and and, and uh, open up and share about your life story and uh, where you're at and uh, how you got there and why and uh, for those that are still here you want to be part of the after party we're gonna have plenty of more questions and answers there and uh, that one's a little more loose just so you know and we're gonna have drinks and I'll probably have a cigar and, Lucy and uh, we're, we're gonna we're gonna kick back but it's still a great conversation but it's uh, more of a uh, more of a chilled, laid back uh, type of atmosphere, but uh, we'll still uh, we'll still answer questions just like we are right now. Um, so we're gonna sign off. And uh, producers, hit that video.